So let's start part two of common male pathologies. In this video, we will be discussing high yield points and doing questions about prostate cancer and benign prostatic hyperplasia. These two conditions also have overlapping features. These include the fact that they're both age-related, occurring in many men that are elderly or over the age of 50. They both include clinical features such as an enlarged prostate, urinary symptoms such as urinary urgency, straining and dribbling, and they both have an elevated PSA. PSA is also elevated in prostatitis. It's very important to note that PSA is not used as a screening tool for prostate cancer. However, it can be used to monitor recurrence of patients who have been treated for their prostate cancer. There will be a video soon about the USPTF screening guidelines, which are extremely high yield for the family medicine shelf and for the step 2 CK exam. So we just looked at the overlapping features for prostate cancer and benign prostatic hyperplasia. And now let's look at their differences. So first, prostate cancer is testosterone dependent. However, in BPH, the enlargement of the prostate is influenced by DHT. Just like with most other cancers, patients with prostate cancer also experience constitutional symptoms such as weight loss, while in BPH, they don't have these symptoms. Also, patients with prostate cancer can experience bone pain or any other signs of meds. So BPH is an age-related condition that causes urinary symptoms such as incomplete voiding and urinary hesitancy. The pathophase and treatment of BPH can be best understood using this. Testosterone is converted to DHT via 5-alpha reductase. DHT mediates the majority of testosterone's effects and has a higher affinity for androgen receptors. This DHT is responsible for the prostate enlargement in BPH. So to treat BPH, we use 5-alpha reductase inhibitors, such as finasteride. 5-alpha reductase inhibitors, such as finasteride, reduces prostate volume and improves urinary flow. So when a patient is given finasteride, there is a decrease in DHT. Because DHT exerts most of the testosterone effects, when it is decreased, this can cause androgen deficiency side effects such as decreased ejaculate volume, erectile dysfunction, and decreased libido. This inhibition of 5-alpha reductase causes more testosterone to be available. So this means that this testosterone can be converted to estradiol and possibly lead to gynecomastia. Finasteride not only treats BPH, but it can also be used in the treatment of male pattern baldness. So in summary, BPH is caused by elevated DHT that drives prostate enlargement. However, these DHT levels can be decreased by using 5-alpha reductase inhibitors such as finasteride. Also, alpha blockers such as tamsulosin can relax the smooth muscle in the bladder neck and prostate gland in turn controlling the symptoms of BPH. It's very, very, very important to note that BPH is not a precursor to prostate cancer. Now let's focus a bit more on prostate cancer. Prostate cancer is testosterone dependent. 
So in order to treat prostate cancer, we need to use androgen deprivation therapy. This can be medical or surgical. Flutamide acts as a competitive testosterone receptor inhibitor. It prevents the stimulatory effects of androgens on the tumor and can relieve urinary obstruction and bone pain. Orchiectomy is a surgical androgen deprivation therapy that can be offered. Men with prostate cancer who receive androgen deprivation therapy can develop gynecomastia due to the dramatic decrease in testosterone. Tamoxifen is a selective estrogen receptor modulator that acts as an antagonist on the breasts and it can reduce the risk of gynecomastia in these patients. We'll end this video by doing rapid fire questions. So let's go to number one. What is the most common complication of BPH? And the answer is obstructive uropathy. Number two, what is the most common type of urinary incontinence in men? And the answer is urge incontinence caused by BPH. Number three, what is the most common site that prostate cancer can metastasize to? And the answer is to the vertebral bodies. The last question says, does prostate cancer cause sclerotic or blastic bone lesions? And the answer is blastic bone lesions. That brings us to the end of part two on common male pathologies. If you have any ideas for other common male pathologies, comment below and I might make a part three. As always, if you like this content, power up the like button, hit subscribe and that notification bell. To continue learning more, click this video right here.